take this ground terminal off, use a 15 millimeter wrench. Once you get it loose, you can slide it right off. Now take this panel off. We want to take all the trim clips off. Use a trim tool. Just get underneath here. Pop that off. If this is attached right here, just pop that weather strip off. Should be one right there. And all around. And right there, pop that off as well. And slide this panel off. Now we're gonna take these screws out. They're all on the top here. Use a T20 socket. Remove all of those. Underneath the vehicle, you need to remove this panel. This is all part of the wheel well, but you need to start with the screws underneath and take these out. Use the T20 socket to get this bolt out and this one over here. That's loose. Do the same on the other side. Take this bolt out here. You have to do that on both sides. Use a 10 millimeter socket. There's two screws right here. Take those out, use a T20 socket. You can just kind of move this out of the way a little bit. And then there's a screw right here. Use a seven millimeter socket, take that one out. Just that one. Take that out. Now do this on both sides and then just grab the front part of the bumper cover right here or the side and just pull with some force. There's some clips that hold it in. And before we slide the bumper cover off, disconnect the parking lights connector right here. If you have that on your vehicle, do that on both sides and just grab the bumper cover and just slide it forward. Helps to have two people doing this. And just slide it out. Now we're gonna remove this bracket. Use a 10 millimeter socket. Take these two bolts out up here and take this bolt out down here. And then same on the other side. All right, remove this bracket. Disconnect this connector right here. It's for the outside temperature sensor. And just use a trim tool, take the retainer off. Set that aside. Now take all the push pins out, just use a trim tool or a screwdriver. And just take these off. There's one under near, under here as well. And same on the other side. On both sides, you have to take all these bolts out. Start with the smaller ones. Use the 10 millimeter socket. And take those out. Then for the other bolts, use a 15 millimeter socket. Take those all out. I'm just gonna leave one in loosely so it doesn't fall. And do the same on the other side. All right, now they're all loose. Take those off and just slide it off. Take these flaps off on the side. There's some push retainers that hold these on. You might need a pick. And just kind of unfold them a little bit. Take a trim tool and just get underneath them. Just like that, take all those off. There we go. And slide this off. Out of the way. Do the same on this side, but we're not going to disconnect the AC pipes. So you're just going to have to slide this out of the way. You don't have to uh, swing it down. Make sure the vehicle's not hot and take the radiator cap off. Just to relieve any pressure. 
This vehicle does not have a drain for the radiator, so if yours does drain the coolant, we're just gonna take the hose off, make sure you have a drain bucket, take some hose clamp pliers, and just move the hose clamp down the hose. Now take a pick and just get underneath the hose. Some coolant's gonna come out. Let's see if you can grab the hose. And just slide it out slowly. Take these brackets off, use a 10 millimeter socket. Take the bolt out, do the same on this side. Now slide the bracket off. Take this hose off right here. And just slide it out of the way. And this hose, use the hose clamp pliers. Grab the hose and slide it off. This condenser is gonna separate from the radiator. There's some tabs right here, just squeeze those tabs. Slide this off, do the same on the other side. And just lift up on the condenser. And just be very careful with this. Slide it out of the way a little bit. You can twist it just like that. Just to get this latch out of the way, we're gonna take this off. It'll be a little bit easier when removing the radiator. Disconnect the connector right here. Push down on the tab. Slide that off. There's a little tab underneath here. Just use some needle nose pliers. Try to pry that through. There we go. Before I take these bolts out, I'm just gonna mark where this was so I can put it back afterwards in the right location. And use a 13 millimeter socket, take these two bolts out. And you can just move this out of the way. Disconnect the connector for the fan, just push down on the tab and slide it out. This lower shield needs to come off. Just use a trim tool, take these push pins out. I just grab the radiator and just slide it up slightly. You're gonna pull it out a little bit. Being careful not to ruin the condenser. When you tip it down, you can access the transmission cooler lines right here. Now I'll take this cap off. You can just use a straight blade screwdriver. Now to remove the line, there is a little clip in there that you can remove with just a pick. Or if you have the special tool to remove the line, you can do that as well. And just slide this off. That's what the clip looks like. Don't lose it. And grab the line, just rotate it back and forth a little bit and try to slide it out. If you have to, you can use a pry bar, just be careful. Here we go. And do the same with the lower one. Now with those disconnected, very gently slide this up. And out of the way. Take this screw out, use a T20 socket. And there's a screw at the top, use the same socket. Take these two bolts out on the side, use a 10 millimeter socket. Now we can just grab the fan and just slide it up and slide it out. Now take the fan and just slide it in position right here. Same on the other side. 
and just slide it down. Now install the bolts, get those lined up and tighten these down. Now take the screw and tighten it down. Snug it up and do the same on the top. If you have any of these grommets, put those in there on both sides. And take these clips that you took out for the transmission cooler lines and just slide this in position like this. And slide it over, lock it in, do that to both of them. All right, and very carefully slide this in position. And while it's still out a little bit, you can put the transmission cooler lines in, get those attached. And just lock it in place, put that cap on. And we have this hold down. Try to get that in place. And lock it down bottom feet up with those bushings on both sides. Now we can slide the condenser in position, lift it up a little bit, and slide this in right here. Make sure that lines up and lock it in place. Now we can connect the wire because it's a little easier, we'll hook the hoses up right now. Slide that on and then slide this clamp down. And you can release this clamp just with a screwdriver, just like that. Attach the lower hose as well. And move the clamp with pliers if you need to. And again, you can unlock it. Put the hood latch back, we can plug it in first. Push that in, get the two bolts started and make sure you line it up where you took it off and snug it down. You could always test the hood right now and then you could access this if you have to make any adjustments. Put these brackets back on and put the bolts in and tighten them down. Now you can put these push pins back in. Now you can align this side shield up. Now I take these retainers. You can use a socket that's about the same size. Just line it up and push it on. Do that for the rest of them. And put this hose on. Make sure that's tight. If not, you can always put a clamp around there or a wire tie. And line this bumper back up. And get the bolt started. Now you want to line this up the best you can to where it was. You can kind of see where the bolts were lined up and where the dust line is. You could have marked this before you took it apart and snug these down. Make sure these are snug. Good and tight. Put these push pins back in place. and do it on the other side as well. Make sure you take this wiring harness and go through that and underneath, connect it to the ambient air temp sensor and push that down. 
I'm going to take this bracket and line it up. And put the bolts back in. Up top. And tighten those down. Now we can install the bumper cover. Just be careful. It would help to use to have two people when you're doing this, but it's not impossible. Just get this lined up. Get that lined up, do the same on the other side. You can just slide this panel back and it'll be easier to connect the fog lights. You could do it as you're putting the bumper on if you want. You do the same on the other side. Now make sure you line this up right here and put the screw in. Snug it down, install these screws, and tighten these down. And install these bolts first. And snug those down. And line these screws up right here and right there. And tighten them down. Now you can put all these screws in and tighten them down. And you can put this cover on and put all the push pins in. Install this ground terminal and snug it down. At this point, you want to add your coolant. Check your owner's manual for the proper mixture and the proper coolant. Run the engine for about 10 minutes, making sure you monitor to make sure the engine doesn't overheat. And when the engine's up to operating temperature, you can shut the vehicle down, let it cool down, adjust the level once it's cool, put the cap back on. And then double check the reservoir, adjust accordingly. Take it for a road test and double check afterwards.